tuck full outs, double layouts. And we're about, might touch on the double ray beat a little bit. I'm not gonna go into the front dismount. Um, I just don't have enough time. I'm gonna hit the two main ones, the full out and the double layout. If you learn the full out, you can apply the same things you teach to the full out, to the double layout once you have it in with the double layout. So we're gonna go through some of those progressions. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take what I do. <coughs> I don't have to do what I do. Al does things different, I do things different. Everybody's a different philosophy of what they do in their gym. I try to teach a bar dismount pretty early. Like at level nine, I start working on a higher level dismount because it doesn't do me any good to have all these skills and then I can't get off the equipment. So I like to teach bar dismounts before I teach major releases. I'm not talking about balonies, I'm talking about single bar flips. So I like to have dismounts. I've had kids that can't do them either. No matter what I've done, all the drills, they just can't do them. So I try to figure something out. Ooh, fancy. I don't think it worked. Okay. Like I said, this mouse we're gonna cover. Full twisting double, double layout, Arabian double. I've actually had a lot of success in my elite career with double Arabians. I think I had three or four kids do them. It was very easy, we picked it up very quick. I actually had an athlete compete a pike double Arabian internationally. And I think that's only been done a couple of times. So, just depends on the athlete. <coughs> okay. The dead cow equals a dead flyaway. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're over there doing athletes by themselves, in the pit, tap swing flat back, you're teaching flyaway is going to have problems that won't turn into much later. <clears throat> We've seen it at developmental all the time. We see um, kids that flyaways are very poor. They come through tops. They come through developmental. We now ask them what they taught. I didn't name it the dead cow, people call it that. It just really doesn't do much for your flyaway because all they have to do is stop their body so they don't rotate. The flyaway is supposed to have rotation. So I would highly recommend not doing this. I think we do it because it's just a station and we put them over there. We think it's learning something and I really don't think it is. I, I would highly recommend staying away from it. I'm sure most people have seen it. Uh, I had this athlete do it in my gym. We don't do it. So I asked her to just kind of do it. So she doesn't even do it very well. But we'll see what it kind of turns into. Hopefully it's not this blurry. Here's your fun dead cow. <laughs> People think they're teaching a flyaway like that. But they're really not. They're teaching her to do is pull her shoulders down, stop her body, and fall on her back. So, if that's in your progressions right now, I would suggest you take that out. <clears throat> Main thing on bars, we talked about this in the first lecture this morning, <laughs> bars is a very hands-on event. I know in this day and age, we have to get our hands on them, we gotta spot them, we gotta shape them, we gotta make them feel successful. If you're, if you're coaching bars by just watching them and talking to them, they're not gonna get where you want them to go. You've got to do the work to teach them how to do bars. And if you can't do the work, hire somebody to teach them to do the work. Spot the cats, all those kind of things. So <clears throat> what I would recommend is dead cow gone. Kill the cow. You don't need to see it again. Spot it time. We do it from the underswing, but take her up, turn her over. You can do this, people do this in lots of different ways. You can go from the top of the bar, you can cast them, shake them, take them up and lift them, but you have to do the work to lift them. I have my coaches spot it underneath the shoulders, so the head and shoulders can't go back. I want them looking at their toes. And we take them out and away from the bar. This lecture isn't to teach a flyaway, but what I wanted to explain to you is, remember what I said earlier, if you were with me, what you teach at the beginning will affect what happens at the end. So if you're a high-level optional coach, and you're not making a discussion with your compulsory coach because you don't do the compulsories, and they're over there teaching bad flyaways, you're gonna have trouble with dismounts later. You have, flyaways have to be 
spend a lot of time teaching that flyaway. I'll just show it to you one more time real quick. I like things from an underswing. open. That's where feet are pointing. Feet should point up for a flyaway. They should not point out. They need to turn up and away from the bar. So we spot those. So again, what you want you do will determine what you have. <laughs> Which one do you want? Turn your toes up, you'll get a double flyaway. <laughs> Alright, here's what I do for remember what I tuck full out. The drills that I do for a tuck pull out doesn't work very well for me. I've had a lot of tuck pull outs in my career also. I do tap swing flyaway, tap swing open double flyaway, and then I work the open double with the arm out, and I'll go through all those with you. My athletes, doesn't matter what level they are, all warm up with tap swing, three tap swing flyaways every day, three tap swing double flyaways every day. No giant, no calf. Just from the tap swing. What happens is when they start to do dismounts, they stop tapping. When you make them tap, you might get a tap from their dismount. You might get a tap from their dismount. Here's your tap swing flyaway. Remember, I told you guys when you were in my other bar lecture, I love under swings. Open, tap, flyaway. I'm looking for a big tap on the flyaway. I will make the tap go down smaller as I move it between the bars and depending on the dismount. I don't believe that you tap above the bar for a bar dismount. That's me. I think that doesn't work very well. You tap big above the bar, hips are open, you pull back to the bar. So what we do is We've learned this a lot when we watch them come from to the tops, hopes, whatever. They'll tap really big on the single bar. They go between the bars, tap gets smaller. So if we don't have a big tap on the single rail, when you get to the bar, you'll have nothing. No tap whatsoever. If you want your athlete to catch releases, put their dismount when they're supposed to, tap them, we'll put them there. Otherwise, they're just guessing. Hoping they're holding on at the right time, Hoping they're not pulling the bar off, the tap swing will put them where they need to be and get rid of the bar. So I'll show you this a little bit and slow it down a tiny bit for you. I think we need to do a lot of these. That's just my opinion. And watching most of the kids do flyaways nowadays, I've seen a lot of these. I want to see her right. Okay, see that shape? cannot get to an arch without a help or a round. What happens in our giants a lot, the first thing that leads is their chest or their belly. Well, guess what? That's all they're going to have coming around because they have nothing to change their shape with. If they have a, a hollow all the way down, they have the ability to open and go back to the hollow again. But if they just fall with their chest out, chances are that's what they're going to do and then they're going to snap back in. So pressure on the bar for that hollow shape, I think is very important. That's a tap swing. Tap swing is not done from here. It's done from here. Whole body, lose your tap swing. Tap swing is not done from your hips. It's done from your armpits pressing down heels rising up, that's what creates a tap swing. <laughs> so I can tell you, as a vault coach too,